For today's project, you're gonna need a weight four medium yarn, a five millimeter crochet hook, a darning needle, a stitch marker, a tape measure, and then a pair of scissors. Now this project is perfect for complete beginners because it only consists of just one long slip stitch rectangle and then two chains up at the top for your little halter tie. So it's really only gonna be two parts. The first part will be the body part and the second part will just be the halter chains. So let's move right on into part one. Okay everybody, so before we get started with part one, you are going to need to know about how long you want your top to be. So you can take a tape measure, put it somewhere kind of below your armpit where a tube top would sit, and then just measure down and get that measurement there and you can use that for part one. If you don't have a tape measure, we're gonna be making foundation half double crochets for the very first row of our top. So what you can do is just keep on adding foundation half double crochets and checking it against your body until you like the length of it. So you guys can do either of those, but now it's time to get right into part one. So let's go and do that. To get started with our part one, you're gonna grab your five millimeter hook, make a slip knot, and then pop it on there. Now normally to start off, I would make a chain, but for this project, when I made the chain and then did all the slip stitch rows, the project gradually shrunk as I went along. So I found that if I made a row of foundation slip stitches at the very beginning instead of a chain, then the project would stay the same width the whole, um, the whole time. So what we're gonna do first is instead of making a chain, we're gonna make a row of foundation slip stitches. So to start off, we're gonna first make two chains. So one and two. Now you're gonna insert your hook into the second chain from the hook or the very first chain that we made. And you wanna pick up both of these loops right here. So it looks something like that. Now we're going to yarn over and pull through just this stitch. Okay, so you now have two loops on your hook, and then you are going to yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. So it's kind of like a single crochet. So that's gonna get us started with the foundation slip stitch row. Now what we wanna do is work our hook into the bottom stitch, which is right here. So this is the bottom stitch. You can see it looks kind of like a V. So I'm going to insert my hook into the bottom stitch and you wanna make sure to pick up both of the loops, the front and the back loop. Now you're going to yarn over and pull through just that bottom stitch, maybe. <laughs> and then with two loops on your hook, you're gonna yarn over and pull through both loops. Again, it's very similar to a single crochet. All right, so let's do that again. So we are going to insert a hook again into the bottom stitch, so it's right here, I'm gonna insert a hook, making sure to pick up both the front and the back loop, and then you're gonna yarn over and pull through just the bottom stitch. Now you're gonna have two loops on your hook, so you're gonna yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And this is how we're going to create our foundation slip stitch row. So you're gonna continue working one foundation slip stitch into the bottom stitch until you reach the desired length of your top. So whatever measurement you got for, um, for your top, however long you want your top to be, I want you to continue making these foundation slip stitches until it reaches that length. All right, so I just made a total of 35 foundation slip stitches, and that is gonna be just about eight inches long. Okay, so again, you guys can add or subtract the amount of foundation slip stitches you do until you reach a length that you're happy with for your top. So now what we're gonna do is move right on to row two. So the first thing, oops, excuse me, the first thing we are gonna do is chain up one. 
Okay, then we're going to flip our work. Now we are going to be making slip stitches into the back loop only of each stitch all the way down this row. So this chain one that we just made is not going to count as a stitch. So that means we are going to make our first slip stitch in the very first stitch of row two. So we're going to insert into the back loop only. Okay, you can see this is the front loop of the stitch and that is the back loop. So I'm going to insert into the back loop only and then I'm going to make a slip stitch. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through both loops that are on my hook. So pull through one and pull through two. Okay, we're going to continue doing that in the very next stitch right here. So I'm going to insert into the back loop only. Okay, and now I'm going to slip stitch. So we'll yarn over, pull through both loops that are on our hook. And we're going to continue doing this. So one slip stitch into the back loop of each stitch all the way down this row. So insert, slip stitch. And I am gonna meet you guys back at the very end of row two. All right, so now we are at the very last stitch so I'm going to make one last stitch into the back loop only, one last slip stitch, and that will complete row two. So it's going to look something like this. So now for row three, all we're going to be doing is repeating row two. So you're first going to chain up one, flip your work, and we're going to work one single crow, I'm sorry, one slip stitch into the back loop of each stitch all the way down. Again, that chain one does not count as a stitch. So we're going to start our first slip stitch in the very first stitch right here. So I'm going to insert into this back loop only right here and then make the slip stitch. Okay. So you're going to continue doing that in each stitch all the way down this row as well. And now in that very last stitch, we are still just going to make one slip stitch in the back loop only. All right. So now that we are done with row three, that's pretty much the pattern. So we're just going to continue to repeat row two until you reach the width of your top, the final width of your top. And I'm going to show you guys in the next scene just what I mean by the final width of your top. You want this rectangle to be able to stretch all the way around your body. So you can see this is what the rectangle is going to look like. You can see just how stretchy this stitch is. So what I recommend is watching the next part of the video and that will give you a better idea of how long you want to make your body part or your part one. So once you're done with that, come on back and I will show you how to seam the whole rectangle up. So like I said, you're going to continue to repeat row two until you have something that looks like this. It's going to be just like this long rectangle of slip stitches. And you want to make sure that you keep making your slip stitch rows until you can kind of stretch this rectangle around your body like so. So I'm putting it around my back. And then I'm stretching it like it's almost as tight as I can. So it's going to look something like this. So you can see that like this top and bottom part, they don't stretch very easily together. I'm just stretching it really tight. So just like about this, like you can see it's barely like they're barely even touching. That's about when you want to stop making your slip stitch rows. And the reason why is because when we seam this all together, it's going to be much easier to put on and we want this top to be pretty tight. We want it to kind of be like a tube top. So it kind of sucks us in a little bit. So I just wanted to show you guys um, that part because it's really easy to make the rectangle a little, a little bit too big, which is totally fine. You can make it too big, seam it together and then realize it's too big. And then you can just take out some rows later. But um, yeah, so now that we're done with that, let's get right on to seaming up the rest of part one and I'll stop talking now. Okay. 
Okay, so this is my completed rectangle. I did a total of 14 inches worth of these slip stitch rows. So the final dimensions for my body part or for my part one was eight inches tall or eight inches long and 14 inches wide. And the last thing we have to do for part one is to slip stitch these two ends together. So first thing you're gonna do is with your hook still on your project, you wanna chain up one. And then we're just going to fold this in half. Okay, so we're going to fold our project in half like so. Now all we're going to be doing is slip stitching these two rows together. And I'm going to be inserting my hook into the front loop only of this row right here, our front row. And I will insert my hook into the back loop only of this back row. So we've already chained up one. That's not going to count for anything. And we've turned our work. Now I'm going to insert my hook to the front loop only of the first stitch. So right here, front loop only, I'm going to grab that back end, it's falling down. And I'm going to insert into the back loop only, so you can see front and back loop of the very first stitch right here. Okay, and then we're going to slip stitch that all together. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three loops that are on my hook. Okay, so I'm going to do that in each stitch all the way down these two rows. So we'll go into the very next stitch, insert our hook into the front loop only. Okay, then we'll find the next stitch on this row right here and insert into the back loop only. Then make a slip stitch. Okay, front loop only, back loop only. All right, so you're gonna continue doing this in each stitch all the way down the row. And I'll meet you guys back at the very end. Okay, so once you come up to the very last stitch, you're just gonna do the exact same thing. All right, so once you're done, you're gonna chain up one, grab your scissors, you're gonna leave a bit of a tail I'm going to leave that that much, cut it off, and then you're just going to pull this right on through. All right, so that's what your seam is going to look like. All right, so you can see it's raised, but what you're going to do is just turn it inside out like so, and it will look like this. It'll blend in much better that way. All right, so I want you now to try on your top just to make sure that it fits you properly. It's not too loose and it's not too tight. Once you're done with that, just take it right off and we're moving right into part two. Okay, so the first thing we need to do for part two is figure out where we want to place our halter ties. Now, as you can see, this is our seam right here. So what we'll do to find out where we want to place our ties is take our stitch marker and place it into that seam on the back right there. So right in here right okay we lay it out flat and then we're just going to place our stitch marker through the front part of our top where it just kind of corresponds with the seam on the back so just straight through all right so it's going to look something like this now you'll turn your top over to the front and this stitch right here is where we're going to make our two halter ties so we'll move right on to doing that Okay, so once we know where we're gonna make our ties, I can take the stitch marker out and place my hook in that very same stitch. So I'm going to take this out, make sure we're going right in this stitch. Okay, I'll place that over there. And I'm gonna insert my hook into this stitch right here. Actually, make sure that we pick up the whole stitch. Okay, so I've already made a slip knot but now I'm gonna place this on my hook and I'm gonna pull through that stitch. So we'll just pull right on through. Now we're gonna make our little halter ties, which are just gonna be chains. So I'm going to chain up a total of 70 chains for each of my ties. So what we're just gonna do is yarn over, pull through and make our chains. Three, four, 
five. You, you can make these as long or as short as you like. They're just going to be tying around your neck. Okay, so once you are done with your chains, you're just gonna grab your scissors, cut the end of your yarn, and then you're just gonna pull right on through. You can see I've already cut the yarn right there. So that's what it's gonna look like. It's just gonna be a chain. I do recommend that if you have a larger chest, you go back down along this chain with a row of either slip stitches or single crochets just to make this a little bit uh, sturdier. So now we're gonna move on to making the second, um, what is this, the second tie, which is still gonna go right into the very same stitch. So you're gonna grab your yarn, make your little slip knots, but you're first going to insert your hook back again into that very same stitch, insert, we'll take the slip knot, put it on our hook and pull that through there we go and then we're going to chain up 70 just like we did the last tie so you're really just repeating exactly what you did on the first tie all right so again once you're done you're gonna cut a tail and then pull that right on through all right and that is all of part two <laughs> takes literally no time at all so once you're done with that, the only thing you have left to do is weave in all of your ends and your little halter tube top will officially be done. All right, so that's going to be the end of this halter tube top tutorial. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.